Hello friends, uh, welcome to our channel where we are trying to present mathematics lessons. Okay, so if we have been looking for a, a channel, an opportunity for you to be able to pass mathematics, you are actually at the, the right uh, or dealing with the right channel. So in this presentation, we want to understand what quadratic functions are. All right, so we are going to deal with the introductory part. While we look at the definition of a quadratic function, try to understand what the turning point is of a quadratic function, um, how to find the turning point, how to find the equation of the axis of symmetry, how to determine the, the maximum or minimum value of a turning point. Now, we are saying a quadratic from quadratic, so it's from quadratic equation. We have lessons on quadratic equations, so you can just see like or subscribe to our, our YouTube channel where you find quadratic equations. So we are saying a quadratic function is a function of the form f of x or y, right? It's one and the same. Uh, because this is in the domain, all right? Uh, so the, the, the core domain, actually, the core domain or the range. So we are saying a quadratic function is a function of the form f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Where these three things, a, b, and c, are what we are calling in constants. But for it to be a quadratic function, a must not be what? Equal to zero. Why are we calling it a quadratic function? We are calling it a quadratic function because the highest degree here is a 2. And there is this function here, there is f of x, which makes it to be a function and not an ordinary quadratic equation. Now, if you were to plot a quadratic function, you come up with a graph. That graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. Alright? So a parabola has got two things. You have got uh, the one that faces down and the one that faces the up. So for these two things, the one that faces down has what you call a maximum turning point. The one that faces uh, up has got what we call a minimum turning point. All right, but how to tell whether it will have minimum or maximum turning point? Simple here, we don't need to use calculus. We just have to use the A. All right? So when A is greater than zero, meaning that A is positive, all right? Then the parabola will have a, a, a minimum turning point. Look, what we are saying is you have got this, all right? And the, a, we are saying A is greater than what? Greater than what? Zero. So it will be like this. It will be up. Alright? So that's what we, we are talking about. This is what we are going to have. This is the kind of an argument that we are going to have. So if A is greater than zero, that is positive. You are going to the positive. Let me, let me emphasize. So it means A is what? Positive way. So it is going to the positive. It's going, you are going up. The positive numbers or positive values. So, if A is less than Z, it means it's negative, so it just go down. Alright? Okay, so, that's what we are saying. So, you can only use A. You check A here. You look at this. What is A? Is A positive? Yes, then it will be minimum. If is A negative? Yes, then it will be a maximum. Alright? So, you just have to use the, the values of A. They are enough. So, now, when you have a curve, like this one, we are, when you have a parabola like that. So you are starting from this point up to a certain point where you begin to reduce all right, or decrease. So at that point where you begin now to change, all right, maybe from positive to negative or to, to reduce, that point is referred to or, as a turning point. Even here, if you are starting from here, you are reducing, reducing up to here where you begin to increase. So at this point, this point is referred to as what? A turning point. So in this case, this is a turning point. And this one is also a turning in point. So if I have a, a function like this, this function has a turning point. Maybe the turning point could be this. All right? That's what we are talking about. Now, this turning point can be like divided into all. We can create two identical shapes through a turning point. All right? By drawing some imaginary lines here. So these imaginary lines will create two identical shapes. So this line that will have created, that will create these two identical sides, 
is referred to as the axis of symmetry. Okay? The axis of what? Symmetry. So here we have the axis of symmetry, and even here the axis of symmetry. Okay? So basically we are saying uh, a parabola has got turning points, maximum or minimum. If A is greater than zero, then it will be minimum. If A is less than zero, then it will be maximum. Are we together? Okay, now I can even erase this side. Now, how do we identify this turning point? How do we identify this turning point? Maybe I can use this. If we have this point, if you have got something like this, okay, suppose this is our turning point here, all right? So at this turning point, you have got two things. You have got the value of x here and the value of y here, all right? So at this point, for you to find the turning point, you must find the turning point with respect to the x coordinate and the turning point with respect to the y coordinate. That's why we are saying the turning point of a parabola. The turning point of a parabola is given by this. That is the coordinates of the turning point, x comma y. So if you are asked to find the coordinates of the turning point, you must write x comma y. You must put them in brackets because those are the coordinates. Now, the question is how do we get x and how do we find y? So you are going to get x by saying negative p over 2a. Then y, you say y is equal to 4ac minus b squared over 4a. Alternatively, you can find x in substitute into the function. Now, when you find the turning point of x, the turning point of x frame is also called the axis or the equation of the axis of symmetry. Alright? Then the turning point of y, it is also referred to as, or it is, a maximum value or minimum value depending on the case or depending on the function that you are dealing with. This is what we have written here. Okay, so let's look at this, this question and try to address it accordingly. Okay, uh, we say answers here. A. We have a function f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now, what I would want us to do is to identify these uh, variables. A, what is A? A is 2. What is B? Is 4. Uh, and the C is equal to what? 5. So now, what is A say? Would the function have a maximum? By max, I'm talking about maximum. By mean, I'm talking about minimum. Would the function have a maximum or minimum value? To answer that, we need to know what A is. Is A greater than me? Zero. Or is A less than zero? So in this case, maybe we are saying, what is the value of A? We are saying A is equal to what? Two, which is greater than what? Zero, or is positive. So, when A is positive, the function should go to the positive values, meaning that it is the minimum, just to go like this. Alright? Because A is greater than zero, then the, the, the function will have a minimum value. So, we are saying this implies that the function, uh, this is function, O have and um, a minimum value. You can write in full, right? That's what we are saying. So the function will have a minimum value. I hope it's clear, friends. Just use A. Okay, there's no need to go to the second derivative because this is the, a quadratic expression. Um, I hope that is clear. B. Uh, Determine the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the turning point. So, x coordinate of the turning point is defined by negative b over 2a. Alright? This will be equal to negative, what is our b? 
uh, b is 4 over 2. What is our a? It's 2. So this is negative 4 over 4. And the answer is e, negative 1. That is the x coordinate of the turning point. Then the y coordinate of the turning point, we are saying you can use the, the formula or you substitute. So we are saying the formula is 4ac minus b squared over 4a. Alright? So we are going to say 4, what is our a? Our a is 2. And our c is 5. Minus b is 4. Squared over 4. Alright? So y is equal to uh, 4 by 8. 4 by 2 is 8. Eh? Uh, 8 by 5, that's 4. Minus Okay, minus uh, 16, I'm not mistaken. All right, so we have 4. Because this by that is 10, 10 by that, that's 40. Okay, so now we have 40 minus uh, 16. What do we get? We get 20, 24 over 4. Okay, we can easily do the, the, the subtraction here. All right, <coughs> so this is three, so you have got four, that. Okay? Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. All right, so here is the four. Please, let's, let's apply the formula correctly. So we have got... Um, that is 40 minus 16. This is 4. I think we'll rest out this pattern of A. What is our A? It's 2. Good. So, we have A 24 over 8. Alright. And what we get? We get 3. That's the turning point of Y. Or alternatively, you can substitute this into this one. So, we're saying O. You can say 2 negative 1 squared plus 4 uh, negative 1 plus what? 5. Alright? So this will give us positive 1. So here we have 2 minus 4 plus what? 5. Alright? 2 minus 4 negative 2 plus that we get 3. Okay. I hope uh, it's okay. So if you are comfortable with substituting, you can substitute. If you are comfortable with using the formula, you can use the formula. Okay, so now we go to C. What is C saying? Write the equation of axis of symmetry. We are saying the equation of axis of symmetry is defined by negative b over 2a. Alright? And we already found this. We said x here was what? Negative 1. So that's the equation of the axis of symmetry. We just write x is equal to negative 1. That's the equation. Don't just write 1, but x is equal to negative 1. Alright? Then D. Find the maximum or minimum value. So in this case, we have agreed that we have the minimum value. The minimum value is defined by this. For AC minus B squared over 4A. And we have already agreed that the answer is 3. So if you are asked directly to find the minimum value, you are supposed to apply this formula and then get 3. Alright? <clears throat> then we go to E. What is E? We are saying determine the coordinates of the turning points. We said the coordinates of the turning point are, are, are given by x comma y. Alright? So x comma y. In this case, how do you get x by this? And how do you get y by that? But in this case, we have already found x. x is what? Negative 1. So you have got negative 1 comma. What is our y? 3. So these are the coordinates of the turning points. So if a person just came to find the coordinates of the turning point, it means you needed to do this. Find this. From there, you do that and get that. Okay? I hope this presentation has been very helpful. So that's where we end. I can give you questions from my textbook. Okay. And just see, copy this and try to attempt. <coughs>